first step prayer for this Upanishad. So let us listen to this prayer. ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಮುನತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾಹೈಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿತ್ಯುಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮೇ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟಸ್ ಮೇ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ನರಿಷಸ್ ಮೇ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಎನರ್ಜೈಸಸ್ ಮೇ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ may we not hate each other let us study in an environment of love and mutual respect peace be peace be peace be when you make an intention it become the reality the whole universe flows through your intentions so let us make this intention that may we study in an atmosphere of love and mutual respect now you can open your eyes So this Upanishad is called Shveta Shveta Shudara Upanishad. The concluding Upanishad. And this Upanishad is, uh, let's say, it is a collection of main ideas from all other Upanishads which we have seen, already studied. So you will find the familiar slogas here and there in this Upanishad. you have already got the master key to enter into the brahadaranya isn't it the great uh, sambodaranya or whatever you want to call it you got the master key so this is very it's not a typical upanishad because you already heard so this upanishad begins it's part of the krishna yajurveda Shedashudara can mean white horse and Upanishad taught by white horse. White horse generally refers to the sun. So just as Brahadarniya was learned from the sun, so to hear also you can say it's a mythical way of explaining things which you know, is very difficult to uh, know who taught this Upanishad because this belongs to the very ancient times but this particular upanishad is a later upanishad because the style of the language and the it is in the poetic form not in the prose as we have seen the brahmadarni upanishad so it must be this upanishad must have been composed in the 3rd or 4th century ad that's why they could collect all cherry picking you know nuggets from all other upanishad good flowers from all other upanishad then made a beautiful garland because i see slogas from kadha upanishad in this upanishad bhagavad gita rudra prashna purusha sukta and muntaka upanishad all this we have seen not purusha sukta and all that but purusha sukta ideas we have already discussed So there is a various cherry picking in this Upanishad. From various other Upanishads, they have collected all, all of them. That shows it is a later Upanishad. This Upanishad also asks three pertinent questions. These questions are eternal questions. 
First question is that where did the matter come from? What is the source of matter? It's a physics question. What is the source of matter? Because we see in material world. You may think, why should I ask these fundamental questions? I know in the corona pandemic, I am worried about when will I get my next vaccination and will I get, uh, 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 you know, COVID uh, infection. And these are your questions. How do I make my both ends meet? But in spite of all this contemporary or, or, or daily worries, we have to take time. That's what we are doing to ask a fundamental question. So where does matter come from? First question. There was six question. And physicists answer that question in the Big Bang. Isn't it? How do we answer the question? A big O. That's how we answer the question. There was a disturbance in the oceanic consciousness. And that became a big O. So two ways of explaining the same thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter because this happened 50 billion years ago. So it doesn't matter to us now. But you know, we need some answer to this question. The second question is that how did life came into? Because for material matter of life, how did li life come into being, into existence? And what is the scientist, scientific answer? You know, the chemical, the chemicals interacting in the oceanic waters produce the first bacterium. And from there, you know, through the process of evolution interaction, the complex uh, life systems arose. How did we answer that question? How did life came? That consciousness through the fontanel as prana enters into the system. That's another way of saying it. That's another way of saying it. So it's a play of consciousness. It barrels into the fontanel and comes through the Brahmanadi and makes you alive. The system alive. And the third question this Upanishad asks is, why we suffer? What is the source of suffering? That's a very interesting question. These are the three fundamental questions in life, isn't it? Why are we suffering? Such an intelligent human being, why should they suffer? What's the modern answer to that question, why are we suffering? Either you say it's a genetic dis problem, so there is sick or, you know, all kinds of deformities. Or it is a, a, a bad upbringing, you know, dis disrupted families and father and mother fighting all the time, or you don't know who are your father, all kind of problems. It's a bad upbringing, that's why you are so. Or it is a genetic. Or you can say the social system. The system is unjust. The majority of the people are suffering. Social system. Then you think of political movements and all that. Or increased protection and distribution, all of those things come. Or the bad choices you made in life. That is another way of answering it. The bad choices you made in life. So these kind of answers are there. It may or may not satisfy you. But the Upanishad says, the problem is, Pradaka Atmanam Prairidaram Matva. The problem is, you have created division in you. Between you and the other, you and God, I and thou, God. That I am seeking something. Life is a continuous seeking. I am not happy with myself. Therefore, I want to get out of myself or change myself and reach somewhere. And when you reach there, you are not happy there, you go, want to go somewhere else. Then you reach there, you are not happy there, you want to go somewhere else. This way from pillar to post like a headless chicken, we are running around. So the problem is, the fundamental problem is philosophical, not even psychological. The fundamental problem is Pridhakatmanam Prairidharam Matva. You are creating in that division. That's called ignorance. Avidya, Maya, all those words are used. 
As a result of that, the hide and seek game comes. What is the hiding? That Brahman or Supreme Consciousness, it hides itself in the veil of ignorance. That is why the hiding. And then you are seeking the same Brahman. So the Brahman hiding itself in the veil of ignorance or in a corner, it is pushing itself into a corner. Isn't it? Children playing hide and seek, they sit in a corner and the other children are looking all around. Same, same kind of children only. And then, you know, they are, they are not able to find him out within a reasonable period of time. He started making noises. Isn't it? Isn't it? They, they start making noises. I am sitting here. I am sitting in this near this fridge or behind the fridge and you are not finding me out. Same thing is a hide and seek game. The Brahman or God is a play. He hides himself or herself and then seeking. And then finally when you find out myself, my God, I was seeking myself. It was not far away from me. That realization has to come. But this covering, Pridhagatmanam Pridhidharam Matva. And then we are trying to find explanation for this. Three questions, you know, some people say it's all time, you are suffering because your time is not good. Kala, the Supanishad say. Kala, my time is not good. A good time may come. So I am waiting for my time. You know, Shani is in a bad position, that's why I am suffering. You are find some explanation. You never look into the real problem. You always want to put it away. So Kala, in, in time everything will be okay. Time brings misery, it's time takes away misery. So some Kala, what is this? They, they say, try to explain everything in terms of time. And some other people, Sobhavam, this is my nature, I am born to suffer, like the modern philosophers. You are born to suffer, suffer. Angst, angst and then anxiety and this is your nature. You are a postmodernist. So you better suffer or sit in a corner or become a fighter. So, Sobhavam, other people say, Niyadi, it's my fate. I must have done something in the past and I am suffering the consequences. Niyadi. So, or Yadricha, there is no explanation for these things. These are all randomly happening. You don't try to find a pattern or a cause or effect. No, no, there is no pattern. There is no reason. It's all randomly happening. Some people suffer, some people don't suffer. Some people enjoy life, some people don't enjoy life. Don't ask me why. That is the way the cookie crumbles. That's it. There's no explanation. It's all randomly happening. So therefore, just, just swallow it. Some people say that also. That's called Yadricha. Then Bhudani, some people say it's all a mixing of Buddha. Buddhas is the elements, you know, the way the elements mix up. Your elements didn't mix up properly, that's why you are suffering. Some people mix up properly, so again random theory. Some people say, no, Purusha, there is some intelligent principle sitting somewhere, the design theory. They are trying to mix up and, uh, and uh, you know, very, very... Uh, powerful Purusha sitting somewhere and trying to play the game, you know, pulling the strings and you are puppets. Sometimes we feel like that. So different people offer different explanations for why we are uh, suffering, why there is material world and then and why Jiva came, there are different, different explanations. But this Upanishad takes a different stand. You know, this kind of rational approach may not help. You have to meditate. So, Dhyana Yoga Adapashyan. So this question, this fundamental question cannot be answered by rational or cause-effect analysis. 
you may bring a super computer and collect all the data it will be like counting the waves in the ocean how many waves are in the ocean morning till evening till the cows come home you can count and finally you discover my god there is no wave there is only water so you can bring a super computer bring all the data and churn it and crunch it and then create some theories and try to predict and then still the problem the more you go the more confusion it becomes so dhyana yoga so the obnishan method is not to answer your question but to dissolve your question i can try to answer your question then you'll ask another question isn't it then i give you another answer then you throw my answer on me also on on my face you know this is a game people play so the obnishan says a state can say we have seen already become very silent so you become more prayerful vishwadhibo rudro maharshi sahanah buddhya shudaya samyunat you start praying give me that insight into the heart of these questions give me the insight so here rudra this this upanishad talks a lot about rudra 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 is vishwadhibaha you know this this cosmic intelligence is called rudra rudra means rodadi the rudra rudra is one who cries for all of us looking at us rudra puts his hand on his head and said why are these people suffering he cries for us and he makes us cry souls cry also rodadi rodayadi cha he makes us cry souls this is a Just as say, just, just, just for the fun of it, let us say, makes us cry. Then he, because we have seen the hide and seek game. So here is one prayer in an utter frustration. We employed all our uh, re- reasoning power and intelligence, and then uh, you know, collecting data and analyzing all that. Still, we are not able to figure out. Therefore, you come, become helpless. Put up both your hands, and then pray. Oh, the one who makes me cry! Oh, the one who may be crying for me, Rudra. What you do, Vishwadhibo, Rudra, Marshi, Marshi means the whole scene. You have a third eye. The third eye is called the Marshi. Drishandi, Janandi, the Marshi. You see everything. Marshi, Saha, Naha, As, Buddhya, Shubhaya, Samyuna. May you give me that clarity, so that I can see things, not in an immediate way, but in an immediate way, that I can see things. So this prayer, you become very prayerful at the end of the day, and not only that, there is you also pray to the Lord Son. What is the prayer to the Lord Son? After the prayer, I'll come to meditation. There are a lot of meditation techniques given in this, which I'll be talking. So you also pray to Lord Sun because the Rudra, the Rudra which is available is the Sun, isn't it? He is the Lord for us. So the the Yunjana Pradhamam Manaha Tattvaya Sabidadhiya Agne Jodi Nijaya Prithibhyam Adhya Bharata. So here is a prayer. May you connect my buddhi to that truth. May turn my attention to that truth. Yunjana prathamam manaha, a savida, a lord son, agne jodihi, and give me that light of the fire. The fire is there in front of me. Give me that light, or make my mind alive to that truth. Nijaya prithibhyam, so that I can lift myself from this mundane preoccupation which I am valuing now. Give me that insight. That's what prayer is. So you become very prayerful, very humble. Another interesting prayer in this Upanishad is Yujevam Brahma Purvam Namo Bhi. I salute that truth. I turn my hands, close my eyes, remove my shoes. that all 
an expression of your humility. And then I pray, Vishroga Yedu Pathye Vasure, take me, lead me along the path where my forefathers walked the truth. Or for mothers also, why not only father? The truth. Shrunandu Vishwe Amrutasya Putraha. Listen this message. Amrutasya Putraha. You are children of immortality, but you behave like mortals. Shrunandu Vishwe Vishwe Amrutasya Putraha. Aye Dhamani Dibyani Tati. Those who live in that. And that you, 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 your place is not here, your place is in the higher levels. Lift to yourself. Then he says, Agnihi yatra bhi madhya de, Vayuho yatra adhirudhya de, Somo yatra adhirichya de, Tatra sanjaya de manaha. Take my mind. Where? Agnihi yatra bhi madhya de, where the fire is produced. You know, they, they churn the fire for you. Mini, take me my mind to the Yajna Shala, where the fire is being worshipped. And then, Vayu Yatra Adhiruddhyade, where the Pranayama is being practiced. These are the places you feel elevish, you feel uplifted. Then he says, Somo Yatra Adhirichade, where the Soma is overflowing. Soma is, you know, that liquor produced from Prasindhi, that particular leaf. Meaning, where I feel very inspired. Give me, take me to a place where I feel intoxicated. So that I can cut out of this mess that I have created. So, Agni ye yatra dhimadhya de, vayu ho yatra dhirudhya de, somo yatra adhirichya de, tatra sanjaya de manaha. See, you are praying like this. You become very prayer. And, uh, when you become that prayerful, you come to this thought, Yaha tamna veda kim rija karishadi. If I don't know this truth, what is the point in doing all these rituals? <coughs> all the rituals I am doing, I can enjoy provided I know the truth. Otherwise, it is only a burden, like a donkey carrying its burden. So, having said all this, the Upanishad says, what I am looking for is, when you have that dhyana yoga apashyat, you have to become dhyanam. Dhyana means contemplative. Which we always I have been emphasizing the contemplative action, reflective action, not reaction. Reaction doesn't take you anywhere. So I become contemplative. I take a breath and pause before I leap. That's very, very important. So Dhyana yoga. Yoga means you need to be separate. Yoga means you should know how to sit. You, you, yoga knows how, you know, you, you should know how to balance your mind and clear your thoughts. So these are all yoga. So two disciplines, dhyana and yoga, is necessary to break out of this illusion and suffering and get established in your uh, center. So, let us see how this Upanishad approaches Dhyana. That's what we are going to spend some time today. So, this Upanishad uh, gives a lot of slogans about Dhyana. And as a result of Dhyana, what you experience? So, let me give you one slogan on that. Yo deva agno yahatsu ya vishwam bhuvanam avivesha ya aushadishu sita vanaspadishu tasme devaya namo namo tasme devaya vishavitane. What is that Lord? Yo deva agno. That, that, that God is manifested in the fire in my kitchen, fire in my yajnashara, fire in my belly, fire up in the heavens of the sun. You can see his presence, the Lord's presence everywhere. So, when you see the presence of the Lord everywhere, what do you experience? A kind of inspiration. You feel inspired. You are no more depressed. You are no more conflicted. Everything falls in place. That's how you experience that. So, 
Yo Devaha Agnav Yahapsu. And the same Lord manifests in the water, oceans, rivers, rain. So how do you miss it? Miss the Lord. Yashvishyam Bhuvanam Mahavivesha. In every minuscule man- manifestations, the Lord's presence is there. The Oshadishu, Anaspadishu, in the forest, in the plants, etc. Tasme Deva Yanamo Nama. My salutations to the Kasme Deva Yahabishabi Deva. Kaska means happiness. So the Lord's nurture is bliss. I am worshipping that Lord. All these are said. And now you find, let us spend some time on meditation. So this operation. So ultimately, you have to have yoga and dhyana. And this yoga and dhyana is not an exclusive pursuit that I have been emphasizing all the time. Okay, let me leave everything and go into a corner and uh, sit there and, uh, you know, do pranayama and I don't eat much and all that. Of course, you experience a kind of dull enlightenment. That's not a real enlightenment. This you have to practice while you are actively involved in the world. Initially you may have to spend some time, we have seen that. Spend some time morning and evening for this meditation. But over a period of time it becomes your default state. You are the time in that state. You don't have to sit in a corner to meditate. But initially you may have to do that. So the Upanishad give you some tips for this meditation. So what are the tips? We have seen it in the Bhagavad Gita and some of the Upanishads also how to meditate. Tribhi, tri runna, uh, tri unnadam stapya samam shariram. So Upanishad says, take, uh, select a nice place, quiet place, where there is no much noise. So this you have to do at least in the morning. If possible, get up at 6 o'clock or 3 o'clock if you want. Go to sleep at 9 o'clock and get up at 3 o'clock. Or if you are going to sleep at 12 o'clock, you need 8 hours of sleep. Or, so, before meditation, you must have had a good sleep. Otherwise, meditation will be an extension of your lost sleep. So, therefore, make sure you have good sleep. To get good sleep, you must really work hard in the daytime. You have nothing else to do, go to the garden and uh, do something. Or play with your grandchildren, run behind them. So you will have good exercise. Or go out and do some social work. So something like that, physical exercise is necessary before you can undertake good meditation. Good sleep. Moderate eating. These are very, very important. Too much eating, you cannot meditate because you feel sleepy. Too little eating also is not good. Some people don't eat at all. Yukta har viharasi, yukta jashtasadar karmasi, yukta sapna vodasi, yoga bhavadi, dukkaha. Isn't it? Eat moderately, sleep properly, work hard for common good. Always our motive should be common good, not, not just what I get. Because I am part of the system. Yoga Sankara is very important. All these things we have discussed before. So in the morning, you sit, and when you sit, your head, your neck, and your trunk should, should, should stand, should fall, you know, straight. Hold your head, neck, and trunk straight. That is the first step. And select a nice place where there is no There is no ant or mosquitoes or flies or rats or mice and or noise, which is very difficult to get to these these days such a place. Most of the noise is in our mind because noise is in our brain anyway. And we are looking for noise most of the time. So therefore if you calm your brain, there will be less noise. So, select a place like that, sit, maybe on a chair or on your and sit straight, he says. Which requires some training, some practice. 
what Paranjali called asana siddhi. Then, hridi samam shariram, hridi indriyani manasa sannivesya, and indriya means the sense of I see your senses. And that you have to be resolved in the hrud, in the heart. Meaning, you are not seeing things or looking at things, hearing music. Some people put a, you know, their music and then meditate. Don't do that. Because you will hear the other music. This music is stupid music. You, you will hear the real music actually. So don't, don't put that. Or a chalk, chewing gum in the mouth and then, then meditate. Don't do that. Absolutely free from all these frills of life. This distraction. So sit quiet. And then sense organs are resolved in the heart. What do you mean by that? Your sense organs are not active. You are quiet. You are going diving deep. Brahmodubena Pradareda Vidwan, he says. Brahmodubha means the Om. Brahma is Veda, Veda. Brahma is Vedic. And the essence of Veda is Om, we have seen that. That becomes Udubha. Udubha means a kind of a boat. Because we are in the Samsara Sagara, you know, drowning and drowning, not yet drowned. Samsara Sagara is the ocean of suffering. Ocean of suffering, ocean, oceanic water is salt, saltish water, saline water. This saline water you cannot drink. Water, water every, everywhere, not a drop to drink. Is it not our life enough? Everything is there, but nothing can be, there is no use. Everything is there. But water is there everywhere, but can you drink a drop of that water? No. So similarly, you, uh, you sit there and then uh, so, to, to cross this ocean, you need a boat. A boat. And that boat is Om. So, you sit there and chant Om. That Om itself become a pranayama. Initially, you can do some pranayama and then Om. Om. That's called Uddhava. Uddhava means a boat. Brahmodupena pradareda vidwan. Thus, you can cross. Shodham Sisarvani Bhayavahani. We are in a very terrible situation now. So chant Om. Oh. And that Om oh will not only reorganize your brain, your system, it will create an energy field around you. People around you also will change. Now, when we do this meditation, a little more details which I am coming. When you do this meditation, you start seeing certain signs, certain experiences. That the Rishi explains. So those who are used to meditation, they will understand what the Rishi is talking about. What are you seeing? Nivara dhumarka anila analana. You start seeing a mist, he says. Those who have gone to Himalaya, they will see that. The mist. As the Ganga is flowing, early morning, the Ganga rises, the mist rises from the Ganga. And the sunlight shines through the mist. And what of sunlight shines through the mist, a million rainbows are invoked. And these rainbows twirled around the trees like sari. It's a wonderful sight. And in between you find butterflies crisscrossing. And the soft whisper of Ganga or the roar of Ganga you can see. That's Om. So this, this whole architecture, the whole landscape of Himalaya is an externalized experience of the yogi. First you may go to Himalaya. Now do you think that fast disappearing in the Himalaya? That's a different question. But it's an externalized, externalized experience of the yogi. So, Nihara Dhumarka 
the marka means smoke not this smoke coming from burning uh, rubbish no that's not the smoke so then anila anala naam you also feel a storm or a breeze passing through the bamboo forest invoking a soft music and then anala naam anala means fire we find uh, million fires so when i say all of this you start imagining all this you don't imagine it has to come naturally don't imagine it it has to come naturally and then kaddi or the fireflies i told you the fireflies is crossing and weaving silken fabric in the in that mist all the spirits crawl it is all a brain you know playing as the brain is contemplating this truth that's our experience i am sure even a scientist who contemplate the truth a scientist also will be experiencing some of this things the gadyo the vidyut lightning lightning isn't it lightning spadiga shashina and you find a million moons moon spadiga crystals all those experiences come after all, all those things are protection of the consciousness isn't it so we experience all this edani rubani purasarani brahmanya abhivyakti karani yoga this is when you practice yoga meditation this is the sign that you see on the way but don't get lost in those things there are already signs on the way there is much more to happen then in this meditation little more details are added by the rishi what is the detail the chakras are being introduced so you know the muladhara sadhishtana manipuraga uh, anahada and ajna and then uh, uh, the vishuddha and the ajna chakra six chakras chakras are added these chakras are all connected with the uh, elements so muladhara connected with the element of bhutatva earth so earth water swadhisthana and uh, fire manipuraka and air uh, the heart chakra and uh, space the throat chakra because speech space and trigunas the ajna chakra and they have their properties also what are the properties earth properties smell so you start getting beautiful smell as though you are entered into a rose garden or something yogi gets that yogi get that smell don't bring a rose and keep there and say i got the smell it'll come naturally similarly the water you know water fall you you find that. you know water falling like a cataract or what for you get that similarly the fire you know fire crackling or light a uh, similarly the 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 vayu as you move to the uh, the heart chakra the vayu the soft whisper of the vayu as the vayu air is passing through a bamboo forest or something and finally you come to the ajna chakra ajna chakra you find great balance so this you can connect all this the chakras the bodhas and the their particular properties gunas meditate so yogi uh, practicing that meditation the first is yantra sharira is this body this all in the upanishad the body become a yantra yantra means you know when you sit in that particular yoga posture it become a yantra yantra is a facility like a like a gun when you 
when you shoot a gun, the bullet goes through the gun, it has got a power, the bullet, isn't it? You have to barrel the bullet through the gun. If you simply throw the bullet, it doesn't have much power. So the Om chanting, Pranayama, etc. become powerful when you sit properly, he says. Then the body becomes Yantra Sharira. And sit properly. All the how to sit, etc. we have already discussed. Cross legged or, you know, uh, uh, Sukhasan, Patmasan, or Virasan, all these asanas are there. And then, uh, Yantra Sharira. So, Yantra Sharira, then the Pranayama. So, Yantra Sharira become Prana Sharira, it become vibrating body. Prana Sharira. And the, from the Prana Sharira, your body become, your whole body become Mantra Sharira. When you are chanting, Om, Mantra Sharira. So, Yantra Sharira, Prana Sharira, Mantra Sharira. From Mantra Sharira, Tantra Sharira. Tantra means the body start vibrating with the universe. Universal vibration. Tantra means Tanudesh, expands. Tantra Sharira. And from there it becomes Jodhi Sharira. It's all light. Light. So these are the various experiences that you go through, he says, as you meditate. And uh, so finally, where do you reach in this meditation? And then as you practice this meditation, you find your own way of doing things also. This we are giving a playbook or a toolkit. How you use it and how you walk through this labyrinth, it will center. So it is only when you practice it you will be able to know that. Because different people may have different experiences, but these are the general things the Rishi talking about. So once the you reach this stage, Praptasya Yoga Gnimayam Shariram. You feel your whole body is burned in the fire of yoga. You know that that rugged or, or, or opaque body become very transparent. And this body of our time our body is very rugged, you know, pain there, pain here and all that. Everything goes. Yoga Gnimayam. Natasya Rogaha, he says, then there is no disease for that person. Natasya Rogaha, na jara, no old age, no old age. Basically, your hair may go grey and your tooth may fall, all those things may happen, but it shouldn't. You should. But let us give some concession for that. So, Venetius, in non-certain terms, says, Natasya Rogaha, na jara, na murtihu. There is no death also for that. How do you understand this? The body has to die, isn't it? You think about it. I am not going to comment on this. I am not going to comment on this. You think about what kind of deathlessness is that? Is physical deathlessness? Some other she is tried in Marsha Arabindo. There his devotees thought that his body will not disintegrate. Because he is a super yogi. But his body disintegrated. Similarly, yoga, Paramahamsa Yogananda. People thought his body will not disintegrate after death. But it disintegrated. So, when you say there is no death, one thing we can understand is he may live, give, give, live a long life. In earlier Upanishads, we have seen you are allotted 116 years to live a healthy life. Live a long life, maybe one. Or there is no fear of death. There is no fear of death. Because you have hit the center. The rest are all Maya, you understand that. Uh, so, na natasya rogaha na jara namruttihu. You always look young. Namruttihu. 
and you don't feel the weight of the body. Lekhutva. Do you feel the weight of the body? Your body is like a ton of uh, sack of cement, isn't it? When you sit somewhere, you cannot get up. You cannot turn this way, you cannot turn that way. No flexibility at all. But the yogi's body, Lekhutva, Mangalakhaum, he says. You don't feel the weight. You float like a wind. You move like wind. Like children. Children are like that. They can jump from this stone to another stone. And if you and I try to do that, we will fall between the stones, isn't it? Haven't you seen some animals on the edge of the mountains walking, moving? So he becomes Uncle Akhavam. There is no you feel very light. The body doesn't, uh, you know, become a big weight around you. Angalakam, lakuttam, arogyam, full health. Alol upattvam, and there is no chesta. Chesta I mean, have you seen people, uh, watch people, taking the nose, picking the truth, or, you know, ears, or shaking the leg, and that's called lol upattvam. This yogi doesn't do that. His moments are very graceful, very graceful, like an actor, like a drug, like a dancer. Very graceful. Every limb uh, is moves very gracefully. So he says, Alaulupattum, Varna Prasadaha, and your skin are shiny. Varna Prasadaha. Shiny skin. Swarasaushtavam and your speech, your words will have a will a force about it. Sweetness of voice, he says. A yogi's voice will be very sweet. Nice to hear. So Swarasaushtavam cha Ganda Shubaha and he doesn't smell, you know, the body order. The body smells like a baby. The baby's body smells sweet. Similarly, his body smells very sweet. Ganta Shubha. Mutra Purisha Malpam. Mutra means urine and Purisha means pieces. Alpam, very little. Not that you urinate all the time or pieces and all that. Very, because whatever he eats, he digests fully. He eats very little and he digests fully. Mutra Buddhism Alpam Yoga Pravrtim Pradhamam Badandi. These are the, and they look like molten gold. Many of are shining. Shining. These are the external expressions of a yogi. It's not exciting. So, and then. Egaha, Krudartaha, Vida Shokaha. He is Eka. Eka means he experiences himself as the entire universe. There is no other for him. Eka. You know, he can communicate with the mountains and rivers and animals and trees and the stars. Not verbal. A communication means you feel one with all this. Though Egaha Krudartaha. Then you are Krudam Artham Yena Saha Krudartaha or Saha Krudartaha. You feel I have arrived. I have used that word several times. I have arrived. There is nowhere to go. A Deva Treva, right now, there is nothing, no future, no past. It is all right now here. So he says, Krudartha. That, that's a very beautiful feeling, Krudartha. I'm fine, I'm okay, I have arrived, I am at home. I am at home. You are not in a hurry to, to go anywhere else. I am at home. Krudartha, Vita Shoka. He is free from greed. He is no more greed about anything. So these are the these are the beautiful things the Upanishad says as a result of your meditation. 
So this meditation we have to practice every day in the morning. 15 to 45 minutes. And it's a very good investment, the minister said. Very good investment. Like you put money in the bank. Or you, you know, cultivate people, powerful people. These are all investment. Similarly here, this is a very good investment for you to not to, so ultimately the, um, the realization expresses itself in this fulfillment, which is called freedom. So that is what the Upanishad promises as a result of this meditation. So dhyana yoga the way he, if your goal is to be free from the suffering which we all go through and we have seen, identified the uh, why we are suffering, old age, disease, loneliness, isn't it? That's why we are suffering. We feel we are alone, we feel we are sick, we are going to be sick. Not that you are sick, you think you are going to be sick. Because we find the mad dance of illness all, over, all around. So this is our old age, death, sickness, then loneliness. Loneliness. We feel we are alone. Nobody bothers. Nobody cares. Nobody to talk to. Nobody listens to you. Nobody appreciates you. So these are the suffering. And this problem can be solved only by our own effort. No government, no scientist can solve this problem. We have to solve this problem by our own effort. And that effort, I am making effort, but I need some blessing also. So I am looking for that blessing. I am praying, I am making effort. So three things are there. We have to make effort. What is effort? This kind of efforts. And then you have to pray. Put the right kind of intentions. And then the blessing. Anugraha, Kripa. We have talked about that. Then things become fine for us. There is no fear. Then there is no time. Time disability operates. Isn't it? When you are happy, there is no time. Time is only when you are unhappy. You know, when you are watching a good movie or play with your grandkids or, you know, or doing interesting things, there is no time. And when you are bored and uninteresting things and the time and uh, you keep on looking at the watch all the time, all the time you are looking at the watch. So time disappears. That is one of the sign of enlightenment. You don't know how time disappears. So you become timeless. Kalatita. You become happy. Ananda Sarupaha. Become happy. So that happiness is not, we have already seen, I have to put a caveat there. The happiness is not pleasure. Pleasure is when you indulge in a desirable object. This happiness is when you observe your desire and collapse into your center. That's the kind of happiness we are talking about. We are not madly running behind those desires. Of course, certain desires are there, Rutti Kapada Makan, of course, it's there. I need some food, I need a shelter, I need some clothing, and those desires are okay, it can be, they can be fulfilled. But the problem is, having fulfilled all those desires, still you are miserable, you are wretched. Why? Atmanam Aviditva, without knowing the Self, you are living your life. So one has to know this right through this meditation. So having said this, now we know what this, that's what I said with Upanishad is a clash of idea from all other Upanishad. And it talks about Rudra. And I also think this is the base this Upanishad the basis of the Shaiva, the Kashmira Shaivism. Because the core of the Upanishad says, Devatma Shaktim. What is in the core of existence? 
is Devatma Shakti. Deva means what is transcendent. Atma means what is immanent. Shakti means what is transient. So the core is the combination of these three. It's the composite entity, according to the There is a transcendent dimension, Deva. There is a transient dimension, which is Shakti. There is an immanent dimension, which is called Atma. Atma means Pratega. The core, these three, like an atom, you know, proton, electron, neutron, proton, neutron, electron, something like that. The structure of everything is very simple, this, this atomic structure. See, in your life also you have all the three. You have a transcendent dimension, that's why you are praying, you are seeking blessing. Your immanent dimension, which is very core in you. And then this transient dimension. And the word used here is Deva Atma Shakti. And this Deva Atma Shakti, Sogunaihi, it is covered by its own guna, he says. What are the gunas? Icha Shakti, Nana Shakti, Kriya Shakti. Or Sattva Rajasthama. So, Gunaihi Nigudham. So, you come to this understanding that the heart of existence is these three fundamental principles together and their expression is the whole universe. So, Devatma Shaktim Sagunai Nigudham. Apashyad. You can realize that, he says. And then, with that understanding, everything falls in place. So that meditation. So he says, Tridha Brahma. This truth is in three, three phases. What are three phases? The transcendental phase, the transient phase, the phase, and the the inner, the the Pratyagatma or the immanent phase. Even in Christianity, you have Christ and uh, you know, the Holy Spirit and God, isn't it? Three, three principles. Similarly here. I give the Christian example because some of you are familiar with those concepts. And that Christ is lying on the cross. The cross is this three. The cross is time and space. Time and space is the cross. These are the two coordinates. In the time and space coordinates the consciousness is hanging on three nails. What are three nails? Sattva Rajas Tamas. The Christ is an eternal symbol of the Jiva. Jiva means you and I. Caught in the cross, these three coordinates, time, space, nailed by three gunas, Sattva Rajas Tamas, hanging there in agony, that is what Jiva is, isn't it? And how many hours he stand there? Six hours. Six hours Christ is on the cross. Meaning what? He has to cross these six chakras. That is six hours. Cross these three chakras. And then he is buried for three days. Meaning he has to cross these three states of consciousness. Waking, dream and sleep. Then he wakes up. Then he becomes a Jivan Mukta. And Jivan Mukta lives in this world for some time. He, he lived in this world for 40 days. Buddha lived for 40 years. Christ lived for 40 days. Then merges into the Supreme Truth. So these are the so Devatma Shaktim Sugune Nigoda. So the gunas mean the expressions. What are the expressions? Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti. Icha Shakti means willpower. Jnana Shakti means knowledge power. Kriya Shakti means action power. So because of these activities, thinking and acting and enjoying and suffering, so that becomes the covering for this truth. And we are lost in this peripherals. 
want us to go deep into this. So when we do that, now some last prayer in this is very interesting. Prayers with that I can conclude. What is the last prayer? Yo Brahm Savishwagrutta Vishwavitta Atma Yoni etc. is there. Kalakaraha Guni Ganesha Samsara Moksha Sujibandha Heduhu is the cause of your bondage and the cause of your is liberates yours. Yo Brahmanam Vidata Adi Purvam Yo Vei Vedamscha Parhinu Oditasme Tamha Devam Atma Buddhi Prasa Pragasham Mamutsharve Sharanamaham Prapati I am taking refuge at your feet. Mamutsharve. You have to simply do that. Then that is the Sharana. That is the refuge. You don't have to go anywhere. You have to bring your hands together. Bend your head. And you say, I am seeking refuge. That is all what you have to do. These gestures will give you that state of mind. Mamutsharve Sharanamaham Prapati. I am a Mamutsharve. I want liberation, I want freedom. I seek. Tamha Deva Matma Buddhi Pragasham. And you have to reveal yourself in my heart. Atma Buddhi Pragasham. Yove Vedams Chaprahinodi. You are the one who created the Vedas and the world. I seek refuge. And if you don't do this, if you don't have this attitude, he says, Charmavada avasham veshta ishyandi manavaha. It is like trying to roll the space into, you know, you cannot roll the space into, a, into and put it in your hand, hold it in your hand. Similarly, your life will be a waste, a lost, a bridge into nowhere. Your life. Don't do like that. Have this prayerful attitude. So, tada devam avijnaya dukkham si antaha bhavishyati. Yes, you cannot roll the space and put it in your arm and then run. Similarly, unless you have this attitude, you can never reach that summit, climb the summit of life. Therefore, be humble, be prayerful, meditate. Get out of this mess and don't blame others. Don't blame others for your misery. You don't outsource solutions. You have to seek solution within yourself. With that prayer, the Tabha Prabhava Deva Prasadacha Brahma Hasheda Shvedara Chavidwan. Atyasamibhiha paramam pavitram provaj samyak. So the Rishi says, My name is Shraddha Shradhara. I am giving you this knowledge by Tabha Prabhava, by my own tapas and Deva Prasada, by the grace of God. I am giving you this knowledge. My name is. So he signs his name at the end of the book. Generally, Rishis don't do that. But this is the modern Rishi, you know, six. 5th century. Uh, ancient Rishis never signed their uh, their uh, compositions. But this Rishi signs his composition. He says, uh, this, this is Shedashara Rishi. I am giving you this knowledge by the grace of God. Rishi be your Rishi Sankha Jushtam. And this is the knowledge sought by all good people. And uh, those th- don't give this knowledge, he says, who is not humble open-minded. Humble humility and open-minded is necessary for receiving this knowledge. So that's friends, this Upanishads, 12 Upanishads, 11 Upanishads we have seen and the central theme I hope is clear to you now and the questions and the answers and then the methodologies and all that we have discussed and now you can buy the text Go through it and pick up the keywords and if you have some doubt you can write to me, you have my email. I am ready to help whatever extent I can and uh, so Upanishad is the very foundation of spiritual wisdom. 
in no other culture they have retained this they all had this once upon a time but they just jettisoned all that but some or other india retained this list for us and the circle is coming to you know the, the, the things are coming to full circle now now we are desperately looking for this list because we are come to the end environmental problem pandemic the crisis of democracy the market system science science also is come to an end now of course they can add more and more but for what so we now we are looking you know old bhagavad gita sitting in the puja room gathering dust you are taking it and then dusting it off and and trying to look into we are desperately looking luckily the indian hindu civilization has kept to this some of the people have dedicated their life in spite of all the insults and humiliation they have been going through to through this rational you know age scientific age they kept it thinking that one day my grandchild will come and pick up this and then and go through this and find some uh, meaning so that's what we have been going through so thank you very much and uh, i had great joy sharing this knowledge with you and now we'll come to some practical things practical things in the next lecture will be on dharma karma brahman of all the practice and practice and theory and everything is the same thing so i will take some time off and i'll meet you on april 3rd april 3rd onwards i plan to give you 16 lectures and if you have heard the upanishad bhagavad gita the 16 lectures i think i have presented you the whole wisdom of indian wisdom tradition not in a academic way my purpose is not to give you information my purpose to give you transformation please understand that so you may not carry a lot of words from me or ideas from me but you feel light and relaxed that's the purpose of the whole upanishad education so thank you once again thank you once again may god bless you thank you